Hi, everyone. This is Patrick Sharpenel. I'm the executive director of El Museo del Barrio. And as part of the activities of Freeze Art Fair Online, for the first time, Freeze uh, is, we will be able to experience an art fair online. And this is really, really exciting. But uh, this is part of the section Dialogos that Freeze Art Fair New York decided to, to start as, a, as an important section, as an important activity last year. Since then, El Museo del Barrio was invited to be responsible to curate that section. And it's important because it gives a voice to Latin American and Latinx artists in the context of a city as New York. Um, we invited three very important collectors. We have uh, three uh, really, really important panelists. We have Eugenio Lopez Alonso, a collector that is based in Los Angeles, in New York. We have Jorge Perez, who's another really important collector based in Miami. And Luis Astrina, who's, um, who has a really important gallery in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, but also is a really, really important collector that in a few months will be showing her collection in New York. So I will start, would like to start by uh, uh, presenting Eugenio Lopez Alonso, who uh, is maybe the most important collector in Mexico, one of the most important collectors in Latin America, the, someone that uh, began to, to help uh, artists and, and galleries in Mexico so they could have international visibility, but at the same time, he was the one who began to bring international art to Mexico. So uh, Eugenio Lopez is not only responsible of building one of the most exciting uh, institution of contemporary art in Latin America, but he's also responsible of uh, building dif dif different platforms that have helped uh, artists, um, uh, curators, uh, scholars, and many other people that are working in the field of contemporary art. So I would like to interview Eugenio to ask a few questions uh, in relation to your history, to the important role that you have played not only in Mexico and in Los Angeles, but internationally. So um, what is, how does uh, a collector like you operate in two very vibrant cities as Los Angeles and Mexico City? And how do this, this very particular context have enrich your vision of art? Okay, first of all, Patrick, thank you so much for the beautiful introduction. I'm so flattered about it and uh, for your introduction. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, we, we, how did we, we how did, do I started doing this and, and why in these two different cities? Uh, life takes you sometimes to different places. I don't want to make this a long answer, but it's a long, long answer to, to, to make it. Art yeah. enriched my life, changed my life, gave me a passion uh, that I've never felt before. Uh, it was something that really, really got me interested. Uh, I started in Mexico City, of course, as a collector. Then I went to, to, to Los Angeles and I opened a gallery for 10 years, Chuck Moore Gallery, and, which was a great experience. And then I continue. I saw so many, I saw the world. I, saw, I learned so much from so many people and I owe this to so many art dealers or art advisors and art collectors that allowed me to see their collections at their homes. Uh, great appreciation for so many people. I don't want to start saying names, but, but because if not the least will be, if I, if I, if I don't mention some, uh, but, but, but Rosa de la Cruz, I mean, so many people and uh, in New York so that they opened their homes. And at that moment, my whole, my, my mom, my mind was set completely in art. And then it gave me an idea one day, it gave me an idea of how I saw Saatchi in London and I saw, uh, and I, we, I had an idea of doing an international collection. It was uh, something that came to me and, um, 
first we started to do um i was to understand how come there was not international contemporary art in mexico from the 50s to now there were some of, of course in some collections which i i really don't that i was unaware of them but that's how my idea started and i said i think it was a passion to bring that every time i went to a country and i saw a collection and i said in mexico if we bring people to mexico nobody has a collection of international art and this is such a great country and los angeles is my my passion that's where i was living between mexico city and los angeles no always and uh, so it didn't reach my life completely. I don't know if I'm answering your whole question. I think it, I, absolutely. You, you, that's a, a great answer. And uh, and I, it's not only that you at this moment you started to build a collection and also and also a foundation, an institution that obviously through the years is what's going to grow. But also you you built a platform uh, to support other other artists and to support other museums and to support uh, specific research projects. So that shows a little bit about your generosity and, and your commitment to the whole art ecosystem. So um, uh, uh, the grants that uh, uh, Fundación Jumex gives really has supported uh, so many, so many institutions, so many people, but it's a, it has helped to professionalize the whole art system. So how did this idea uh, really uh, of supporting uh, something that were not, it was not precisely your own museum and your own collection, but supporting the whole art system in Mexico and beyond, how did that idea came to your mind, Eugenio? Oh, uh, if I say it came from people like Stella, Patricia, Patricia Martin and, 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 and many other people. It would be so selfish of me. It came from inspiration from other people. I got inspired oh, when I saw uh, Rosa de la Cruz collection. Uh, 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 it was my God. I was, and I brought my parents there. And I'm talking to you in the most familiar way. And I'm telling you. And my, because my, my biggest thing was my father would want to invest on, on contemporary art and he couldn't relate to other collectors. But when he saw Rosa, such an elegant woman uh, with such an incredible collection and the way she spoke that morning, there, there are days in your life that are like, that you put them in your calendar as key days, no, I don't know. And when he came out, he saw, because how could I convince him to buy an installation? <laughs> how could I convince him? To buy? But there were things that I loved. Patrick, you have no idea to have a Felix Gonzalez story. I, 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 I was crazy about it, you know? And uh, to have a Robert Ryman, it was, but it was international. Then, when it happened in Mexico, I think it's a movement. I don't know what, what was going on, but around the year 2001, two, three, well, Gabriel Orozco, of course, was already a star and was already someone who opened the, the gates for, so, for Latin American art, such an important person. Important, important as an artist, important as a person, intelligent and, 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 and the quality of his work. So thanks to, to also your presence in Los Angeles and your ro role as an active uh, board member and, a, and an active uh, donor uh, in important institutions in the U.S., um, you have been not only living in Los Angeles, but you have been a very active supporter and a very active board member, someone that he's, has really uh, supported also the uh, not only Latin American artists, uh, but also Latino artists in the U.S. So, uh, 
uh, I could give uh, for obviously for Chicano art and the example of uh, Ruben Ortiz Torres, who's a Mexican-based artist who moved really early in, a, in his uh, early years to Los Angeles and became a very important Chicano. Uh, and this is uh, an example of artists that yeah, you have supported and artists that are re really well represented in, uh, in your collection. So I, I, what, how do you see now that the, the interest in Latinx and Latin American art is growing so much? And what is the role on a, of a um, collector that has an institution based in Mexico, but, uh, but that also lives in Los Angeles? What, how do you see the future of uh, Latinx and Latin American art in the U.S.? Well, first of all, uh, <clears throat> I'm totally fine. Just, uh, just to <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, Latin American art, uh, contemporary art, European, uh, Asian. I want that the, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic. I don't like the term Latin American, but you are Museo del Barrio, of course. <laughs> yeah. Latin American art. And I understand it. To me, I think that it, 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 we, when there's quality in the work of people, it, it has changed so much from when I started. Before, there were only some artists here uh, who were producing the same kind of work, which was not bad, but they were related as artists from Oaxaca or artists from here. And there was so much talent also. And all of those artists also are important, are important, and 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 they have their place in history. But there was something that there was a movement that was going on in Mexico also. That at the same time it happened internationally. I mean, with Gabriel Orozco, if we go to every generation, I cannot go from the 1950s how the, they started. Uh, 40s abstract expressionism and then it goes to pop art and then uh, the Americans they start doing incredible things and uh, and at the same time now that I know a little bit more than what I knew what I knew before I saw that in Brazil my god there were there was a minimalism uh, in the 60s going on um, in every country it's a discovery every day. You learn every day. So to me, to be collecting, uh, if, how do I see the, the, uh, the Latin American artists in, 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 in all over the world, worldwide? Not in, only in the cities of New York and Los Angeles, worldwide. I see there's a, lot, a big change. And I'm so happy about it. Because finally, they're producing very good works. And we have wonderful galleries, and internationally, thank God, they've been paying attention and doing exhibitions from them. Because if it wasn't for the galleries, if it wasn't for the museums, the collectors, we do things, we, we, we buy the work, but you have to, it's so important to make them happen. And what people, they don't know sometimes, it's what all the risks that galleries they take. And thanks to the curators, and I don't know what comes first, you know? I think that it first comes, you have to be admired by your peers, then the curators, then the galleries they take, they take over. And, and the information nowadays, it's so fast. Thanks to these, what we're doing right now in this terrible time or severe time, strange time uh we can talk about it and uh and you know something it, it is uh, it is so important in the in what it's going on right now and what has been going on it changed completely i think we have in, incredible artists in latin america no not only in mexico because I don't, I, I don't like to be only to talk about Mexican artists or only or the people who only talk about Colombian or or Brazilian artists. Everyone can do whatever they want to know. Uh, you have to be very proud of where you're from. But uh, but me, I see it 
as global. As global. I, 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 I think that we have a place in this world for some, for some reasons. And there's a new generation who are coming up and, 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 and incredible works of art. If I start mentioning artists, I will, I will ignore some names. I will not remember all the names. And I would hate that. I would say, but there's so many artists that you know, Patrick, that right now uh, we have you here in, in New York and, and, and thanks to you, but also Americans and European collectors and European, it's not only Latin America, the support that we gave to the artists. Now, we started, I started to buy them because I, lo I, lo I like the works that, that they have, the artists, but now they are, they have become, it's such a, it's such a, so, so beautiful to see when you see someone, his career being rise, or who's a star, no, I don't like to use that word, no, recognized, and by very serious people. And, and this has been, I think it's completely different from before. Would you ever build a museum in Los Angeles? Have no. this idea ever come to your mind? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I swear to you, who knows? Who knows? Because that, of, of your I, I, I cannot, I, let me tell you something. My dream came true to, make, to have the museum in Mexico. My ideas, we live in such a strange moment that I cannot say, yes, I would love to do it and I will do it one day. No, I don't know if I'm still going to be alive. I know, I know that this, I'm coming outside of, out of this, I hope, but um, I don't have anything. And, uh, but it's such a strange, if I if had the idea of doing something in Los Angeles, not there, maybe, maybe. If the moment comes, if things continue to be okay when, once we recuperate, of course I would love to do many things. And I would love that I have ideas and they cross my mind. I have dreams. Uh, but I, I'm, I don't know if I will be able to achieve them, you know. Um, I live here in Mexico City and and I feel, now I can tell you that I feel proud that we have done, and when I say we, you're included, of course, because you started that museum with me and your input and so many people's input in that museum, like Rosario Nadal, like, like everyone who was there, Julieta Gonzalez, everyone. Oh my God, Begoña, Hano, and everybody, we created, and right now, after six years of opening the museum, seven years, I believe, 2013, November 2013. But let's go back to all the exhibitions that we did in Ecatepec, because this started as, 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 a, as, a, as a program with artists, inviting curators. And, and when I see the exhibitions, I didn't want to bring the, the exhibition list to brag about it, but how many curators, how many people paid attention in a place where it was outside of Mexico, Mexico, but in the outskirts of Mexico City. And, uh, and all I have to tell you is this, the Humex project in the international press were the ones, the foreign press, the ones that start getting attention from first that, than anyone. And I owe them so much because then Mexican press, because at the beginning, who's, what is this? But everybody was curious what I was doing. But when they, 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 they give me validation, the international press to the project that we were doing, and then start changing everything at the same time, galleries start changing the programs. Not because of me, no, no. Here in Mexico City, some new galleries came up. And 
it was it, it was a dream uh, thanks to curators like you so very uh, but we were a very young generation back then and uh, we're still are <laughs> that thanks to thanks to, <laughs> thanks to all of everyone uh we did we did a museum the, the collection and if i see the museum from 2013 to now november and I see the program, and I see the exhibitions, and I see how many artists, how many good curators. I'm so proud and so grateful to so many people. I swear to you. First of all, to my father and my mother, uh, because uh, without them, none of this would have been possible. And, uh, and I just absorb from everyone a little bit. I wanted to see, like a thief, to steal, not a theme, not stealing, stealing, but stealing ideas. <laughs> I, I, when, I, when you hear intelligent people talking about something, then you get the idea, and then you want to make it yours without being yours. But <laughs> what, I mean, what I mean is that uh, this is not, um, this is my project. Yes, of course, we did it. We did it in the museum, we did it in the company, and uh, but it's been, what a change. And how fast 20 years have, have gone by, like this. From 2001 to now, I remember when I opened and I think to myself, oh my God, how precious this has been. And, it, and it, the fact that you're here with me uh, this afternoon and that you're doing this interview uh, makes me feel that uh, we have done something important. Right. Thank you, thank you, uh, Eugenio. Um, not only because you have built, I insist, one of the greatest uh, foundations for contemporary art that I know, but thank you also for supporting and being so generous with the old art ecosystem. Uh, gracias, gracias, uh, and we'll be in touch. Let's keep in touch. Thanks to you, Patrick, and thanks to everyone in the art world. And let's keep our hopes here. There's the art, well, art will never fi finish. This is not the end of the world. Things will be different in different ways. It's going to be different times, maybe tough times. Tough times, absolutely. But it will teach us something, I hope, for everyone. And thank you so much for your interview, Patrick. Thank you. Gra Gracias, Eugenio. Un abrazo. Gracias, Patrick. Bye-bye.